Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Desert Have a Garden. It is September 1st and we are having a major change in weather. So it's still hot. It's 104 degrees today, but that's actually nice for us desert people. I'm out here in the sun and it feels nice. I'm not sweating too bad. And um, we've just noticed a real big change in the way that the sun is positioned in the garden. Um, the sun is setting a little bit differently in the evenings. We're definitely getting that rotation into fall weather. And it's actually cooling off at nights here, so we're getting down into the mid 80s at night, which is really nice for us. Um, usually in the summer, we don't drop below 100 at night, and so it's hard when you don't have a reprieve from the heat. But what I wanted to tell you about today was my Roselle. So Thai Red Roselle is the variety that I have, and it is a type of hibiscus. Now, Thai Red Roselle is used for um, the calyxes that grow after the flower pod and then those are used in order to make a tea. It makes a delicious cranberry flavored tea and can be used for many other things including even making cranberry sauce um, if you don't have cranberries. So this is my plant. It's, it's huge. Can you see that? It has taken up a very large area. So I'm having a bit of an issue with it with what I believe is iron deficiency. And you can see that the plant is growing really nicely as it's, um, that's well, gotta be about four feet or more tall. It's getting up close to my height and I'm not all that tall. Um, but the, the new growth, the leaves are starting to show some yellowing while the veins of the leaves are still really dark green. So that usually indicates an iron deficiency and I want to address that um, so that it can put on the flowers. If it doesn't have the flowers, then I don't get any tea. And what's the point of the whole thing? So I figured I would just make a quick video on what I'm going to do to adjust that. So let's come in a little bit closer to some of these leaves. And um, here you can see a leaf. I'm trying not to get so much shade. But you can see a leaf that looks like it's doing pretty good. It's nice and green and the way a leaf should be. But then we've got newer growth, for example, over here. And you see how it's yellowing in between the veins and then the veins of the leaf are darker green. That has me a little bit concerned. So I have this on a lot of the new growth here. Let's see if I can get it to focus in there. Do you see how that's yellow in between? And so um, we have lots of leaves that are looking like this. Here in the shade, you can even see it a little bit better. So I wanna make sure that this plant is healthy so that it can um, do its whole cycle. With the weather changing, I don't want it to have an issue where it misses its flowering cycle. So as it goes into the cooler weather, it's going to wanna to reproduce and put on those flowers. So another thing I wanted to show you is just how monstrous this is. The last time I grew um, Thai Red Roselle, I had a small area and I just planted one or two plants and only one survived. Well, this time I think I planted six in this area that I also planted tomatillos, tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers. And now I have, here, look what I'm trying to get past here in the ground. This is just crazy. Um, we had a big windstorm come through and knock over the Roselle. And after it knocked it over, I haven't been successful in standing it back up. And here it is blocking my way. Whew, okay, made it around. So that's my walkway. And then I had some tomato cages for the tomatoes, which were right here. And I actually pulled them out because they were past their life cycle. And so I pulled out the tomatoes, but the roselle is all wrapped up inside the tomato cage. So without cutting the cage, I can't get it out. So I'm leaving it for now. But I wanted you to see how thick these stems are. And here is a little pepper that has been pretty much shaded out, hasn't had an opportunity much to, to fully flourish here, but you can see it is putting on a little pepper there. Maybe we'll get a pepper or two out of it. Um, so yeah, this guy get out of the way. But look at these stems. It's like almost like a trunk on this roselle. Let me give you a reference for my hand here. This is like super thick. That pepper, geez, 
Okay, so here is the trunk of the roselle. And then it just grows off into a crazy madness. And here we are in the shade with all of the roselle. And it's really quite lovely. And I'm hoping that I get a really awesome harvest from all of this. And then I do have tomatillos still growing on that side over there. It's just a wild mess. So this is what happens when you have more ambition than you have garden space. And you way over plant stuff. So here's the roselle jumping across. This was supposed to be the walkway here. And here's the roselle leaning all the way across. And coming over towards my other garden bed where I have the monster okra growing and more monster okra. So it's kind of dark. But here you can see all this roselle with what I believe to be an iron deficiency. Now the reason I'm not going to amend the soil at this time is because you're supposed to do it in the spring at the time of new growth. And additionally, we have very, um, very alkaline water here and alkaline soil. So that could be causing issues with the iron uptake. And if I apply it directly to the leaves, it's going to absorb it right up. And it may take a couple applications, but hopefully one or two applications will, will show some improvement in this plant. And instead of just getting such vigorous growth, maybe we'll start to see some flowering on this plant. Okay, so in order to make a spray, a foliar spray for our roselle, I'm going to be using iron chelate. And what I need, let me zero this. There we go. So what I'm going to need is one third ounce. So really like three tenths of an ounce of this to add to 32 ounces of water. So there we go, that's a little bit much. There we go. Okay, so I'm using my, my scale and then I'm going to add it to a regular bottle here. I'm using a coffee filter and let's see if I can pour this in here without making too big of a mess. in there so we have our iron chelate in there and I'm going to add some water all the way up to 32 ounces and RO water is best for this to help with absorption All right, we're full to 32 ounces. Sorry, this isn't the best camera angle. Okay, and so there's my spray bottle. I'll shake it up and let's go back outside and spray this onto the plants. We're back in the garden and I've got my spray. You see that it's this kind of golden yellowy color, nice and shaken up. And here is one of the most affected areas in the garden and we're just gonna get to spraying. Um, you just wanna mist it all over these leaves in order for them to absorb it nicely. what I think is a good mist all over the whole plant. Um, you can definitely take some breaks in between if you have a monster of a plant like this, if your hand starts getting tired. Um, so I just uh, got it all covered up and let's check back in a week or two and see if we're seeing any improvements. I'll make another video on that. And going back to the measurements, you're supposed to use um, one to 100 um, ratio for the iron chelate to water in order to spray it on the foliage and then um, I think 
that's really all I've got going on today. So you can see the roselle behind me and I'm really looking forward to a big harvest this year after having so little the previous year. And it really was so tasty. It was um, quite exciting to have tea out of my own garden. So I'll check back with you in a couple weeks. Until then, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe for more updates in the future.